Salve, friend. I'm Galerius. Mind telling me who you are and what you were doing in the Shrine of Proserpina? Uh, no idea what you're talking about. Oh, wait. Are you a bit, you know, not right in the head? <laughs> That's all right, friend. Everyone's welcome here. We sort of lose track of the date down here, but it feels like the beginning of spring to me, so I'd say early March? It's 817 AUC. Sorry, you look confused. 817 years since the founding of Rome. Which part of the Empire are you from, exactly? C.E.? No idea what you're talking about. But listen, most folks seem a bit confused when they get here, but you... you seem very lost, and in more ways than one. So... Let me make this nice and simple for you. Live by our law here, and we'll all get along just fine. Not laws, law. There's just one, the golden rule. And the punishment for breaking it's... Well, it's kind of horrific. But our magistrate insists we take all newcomers to see him, so I guess I'll let him fill you in. So then, are you coming? Follow me. When I first arrived, I couldn't believe there were people living down here. But, as you can see, we've got a nice little community now. Only 23 of us at the moment, if you count the three who are missing. No idea how, since nobody knows a way out. But it's just big and dark enough to get lost in, if you're not careful. Aren't you going to introduce me to your handsome new friend, Galerius? Keep it in your loincloth, Aurelia. I'm taking him to see the Magistrate. That pompous old boar won't be Magistrate for much longer. Anyone who helps vote him out today, drinks at my bar for free tonight. Ugh, politics. I'd stay clear of it and her, if I were you. She's... Uh, it's not my place to say. Down on your right is our farm, where I grow all the food you'll ever want. As long as all you want is leek, cabbage, and wheat. Huh. That one usually gets a chuckle. The bloodless shadows wander without flesh or bone. Ah, don't mind Livia. She means well. She's just been in a bad place since... Well, you know, I don't know what happened to her. Up here on your right is the chasm. If you've got a weapon, it belongs way down at the bottom. Up on your left is the forum, where you can visit the market or get yourself patched up in Lucretia's clinic in the Shrine of Apollo. Most of us have almost nothing, just what we had on us when we arrived and what we've been able to make and scrounge up since. And this central plateau is where the Magistrate and the other patricians live, so don't expect a warm welcome. Galerius. You're meant to be working the farm, not trudging dirt into the villas. Take it easy, Horatius. I was just taking our new friend here to see the Magistrate. Well, he's asking me to escort the newcomer personally. The farm. Go. Now. You'd better go with him. But just remember, they're not like you and me. Don't let them use you. What was that? What did you just say? Uh, I said it'll take some getting used to. Yeah, I'm watching you, farm boy. Greetings, citizen. My name's Horatius. Magistrate Sentius asked me to escort you to him personally. Follow me, please. I expect the Magistrate wants to brief you about the Golden Rule. It shouldn't take too long. He's busy preparing for the election later today. Follow me. The only thing you really need to understand right now is the Golden Rule. Let me see if I can explain it this way. When I was serving in the Legion, if there was a mutiny brewing in one cohort, the legate in charge wouldn't waste time finding the bad apples among hundreds. They just divided us into groups of ten, made us draw straws, and whoever drew the short straw had to be executed by the other nine. Didn't matter whether he'd done anything wrong. Ugh, this place one has become a thoroughfare. One of us in thoroughfare. ten would die 
for the crimes of the collective. Ugh, I wish Horatius would stop letting barbarians in here. What do you want? Like to you. I'm you Sentia, eldest daughter of the magistrate. But you'd know that if you'd been invited in here and introduced word. properly. What are you doing in here? And why are you dressed person. like that? <laughs> Ugh, what is it with you people? You heard the rumor that my little sister escaped and figure I must know a way out too. Is that it? Well, that's just a stupid rumor. We have no idea what happened to Centilla. I wish you mouth breathers would just leave me alone. I don't know. Can you? Can you tell me how a person could have disappeared from a city with no exits and no crime? Was she snatched away by the harpies? <sighs> it was three weeks ago. We ate our evening meal together, and I remember she seemed happy. In love. We went into our rooms, I went to sleep, and when I woke up, she was gone. That's it. I think so, yes. But she was very careful about keeping his identity a secret, even from me. Because our father had plans to marry her off, eventually, and even a rumor about her attachment to some mystery man might have ruined those plans. I don't know, but it's been three weeks since she disappeared and he hasn't come forward. That might speak to a guilty conscience. All I know is, whoever he is, he's still here in the city. You really aren't from here, are you? All Roman women are named after their fathers. I think it's their way of branding us, like cattle to be sold at market. His family name is Sentius, so I'm Sentia because I'm the eldest. And my little sister is formerly Sentia Minor, but she is affectionately known as Centilla. Why? Because I'm on this couch and not pacing about the villa, wasting energy. I hope you're not insinuating I'm somehow pleased with her disappearance. Ugh, you're awful. Get out of my villa and never speak to me again. Do I need to ask Horatius to escort you out of here? Get out, you horrid barbarian! We're finally alone. I assume you already know who I am. May I know your name? A curious name to match a curious accent. But I digress. I see you have the piercing and astute eyes of a man of great learning. We're always happy to welcome another scholar to our little community. Equitia will be delighted to meet you, I'm sure. Now, you're probably wondering why I summoned you, and I'll get to that. But first, take a look at this wondrous place, would you? A secret city built deep in the mountains many hundreds of years ago. Indeed. More importantly, consider the miraculous community we've built here over the last seven months. Twenty-two complete strangers brought together by the fates living and working together in our own little paradise. And in all that time, not a single sin has been committed. No fights, no theft, nothing. Have you ever witnessed something so extraordinary as a city without sin? Nor could I, until I came here. But the reason for this, this miracle, is as simple as it is terrifying. If even one person commits a sin here, every last one of us will die. You see, the builders of this place, whoever they were, left inscriptions warning, the many shall suffer for the sins of the one. From what we can gather, breaking the law here will anger the gods and provoke a terrible punishment. 
like the curses of Medusa and Midas combined, turning us all to gold. We've come to call it the Golden Rule. It's extraordinary that we've survived as long as we have, and each day I grow more and more afraid that our time in the sun is almost up. And now it seems that day is finally here. All that matters is that somebody in this city is about to break the Golden Rule. Why else would Proserpina send you now? Unless you and I can stop them, our doom is assured. I know that's a lot to take in, and you look like you have questions. Please, ask away. An intelligent question. There was a good deal of debate about that in our first weeks here. Does it refer to crimes, or to some other ill-defined wrong? Of course, everyone agrees on the basics. No theft, no assault, and certainly no murder. But beyond that, it was more difficult to reach a consensus. What about lying, insulting someone, blasphemy, trespass, trying to escape, bribery, infidelity, suicide? As magistrate, I had to exercise leadership, and so I made a decision. We must uphold the laws of the Empire to a standard never before seen. And we must honor the peace of the gods, the sacred accord between the gods and the people of Rome. It is only by offering the gods the proper respect that we may prosper, as Rome has for centuries. Barbaric? Barbaric? What are you talking about? The Empire is the most civilizing force in the known world. Rome is a beacon of light in the darkness. For 800 years she has borne great statesmen, philosophers, poets, artists and engineers. We have comprehensive laws protecting the rights of our citizens, which have unified countless warring tribes all across the Mediterranean and beyond, from Gallia to Judea. All our citizens are treated the same, regardless of the color of their skin or their sexual preference. Can you say the same? When our people are starving, they are given food rations, and when they are wronged, they have the right to bring the guilty party before the magistrate. Our laws forbid treason, murder, assault, and rape, as well as theft and arson, and so on. No other civilization in the world is so advanced, and you have the, the hubris to call us barbaric? Of course, what else would we do with those prisoners of war who would otherwise have been executed? And besides, there are laws for their protection as well. On occasion, but our gladiators are almost all volunteers seeking glory, or condemned prisoners who would have been executed anyway. I do not see the harm. Of course, but with fewer rights come fewer responsibilities, and the right to be protected by their fathers and husbands. Uh, you mean the blasphemous cult responsible for burning down half of Rome last year? It's hard to blame the people for being angry about that. Are you talking about our practice of decimation? Of course. We could hardly unite all these warring tribes without a disciplined, formidable legion. Well, right now, you're a long, long way from home. I have made my pronouncement on the subject. Unfortunately, there are still those here who resist, whispering blasphemous and treasonous lies in the shadows. I would be keeping a close eye on them if I were you. You see, in my search for a way to save my people, I learned of an ancient ritual to Proserpina, the goddess of the cycle of life and renewal. It's said to open a doorway in time, so that if the unthinkable happens, one person can pass through it and travel back to the past. And when I saw you arrive in a flash of light from the goddess's shrine, I knew that person was you. You don't belong in our time, do you? 
2,000 years? That is unfathomable. Please tell me, in your time, what did you see? What had become of us, of this city? I have imagined it, our downfall, a thousand times. But it still breaks my heart to hear the truth of it. All I can tell you is that it's a ritual sacrifice to Proserpina. I stumbled across instructions. I have to recite a prayer, and of course, as with all rituals, some sacrifice is involved. Usually that means wine or food, or in some cases a live animal. In this case, the sacrifice is rather more costly. The life of the person performing the ritual. I don't suppose you saw any sign of me in the future? Ah, I assume that was me. If I'm forced to perform the ritual, it's going to cost me everything. You'll try to make sure I don't need to use it, won't you? Well, I suppose that's all I can ask for. Well, I believe you're in the best position to go around asking people questions. You're new here, and it'll seem perfectly normal. As for me, well, it pains me to say my attempts to impose order have not earned me many friends. I fear I may not even remain magistrate after today's election. The people here would only treat my curiosity with suspicion. You shouldn't have that problem, though, unless, of course, you get off on the wrong foot. Do you ever stare at a problem for so long that you can't see it for what it is anymore? What's needed here is a fresh pair of eyes. The less I prejudice the independence of your investigation, the better. Ah, so you know about that already. It's a devastating loss, of course, but that was over three weeks ago, and whatever happened to her, it didn't break the golden rule, so I don't think it's connected with our imminent demise. Still, if you happen to find her and return her to me, I would be eternally grateful. Me? Why would you suspect me? I've just told you, I'm about to sacrifice my own life to ensure these people have a second chance. What reason could you possibly have to suspect me, of all people? I'm glad you think so. Without trust, without each other, we won't be able to prevent what is about to happen. Well... There are those who wish to vote me out of office so that they can pursue their own misguided political agenda. Frankly, their selfishness and recklessness risk destabilizing the entire city. I would be looking very carefully at them if I were you. If I understand Proserpina's ritual correctly, that problem should take care of itself. Let me see if I can explain. If you manage to prevent the sin that breaks the Golden Rule, I won't need to bring you here. I won't create the portal, and you will never have been able to come here. Thus, you have created a paradox. If this occurs, you should be flung back to your own time, having changed the past for all of us. Make sense? Ah, good. So, are you with me? Can I count on you to figure out who's about to break the golden rule? Wonderful. Now, I need you to investigate the city. Talk to everyone. Help them, if it'll win their trust. I authorize you to enter private homes and inspect possessions and documents, unless, of course, you're asked to leave. Figure out who the culprit is, and as soon as you have a name, come back and tell me immediately. Oh, and one last thing. If I were you, I'd start my investigation by visiting Lucretia at the Shrine of Apollo. 
in the forum. I heard wailing from there not long ago. Seems like something's not right. If you're snooping around in my possessions, you're wasting your time. I need to ask Horatius to escape. What were you two talking about? Don't play dumb. I saw you. Having a shady little chat with old man Sentius up on his balcony. What's he offering you? Money? Favours? What's your vote worth to him? A spit of a fauna career. We've lined up all the votes we need already. Mark my words, Maliolus is going to be magistrate by the end of the day. And if I tell him you've sided with that feeble old has-been, that you've been trying to undermine his hard-won victory. You'll have picked the wrong patron. Got it? Good. Then stay out of it. Nobody likes Caput Murde foreigners interfering in an election. Ah, uh, Connor. The name's Domitius. You want to get to Maliolus, you go through me. Too bad. He's busy. Unless... No. You don't look like you could afford it. I'm glad you asked. See, he's a busy man, and this is an important day. He'll be inside practicing his victory speech for tonight. Left me strict instructions he doesn't want to be disturbed. So if you want to see him, I'll need something valuable in return. Dunno. Something good. Bribe? That's such an ugly word. What I'm looking for is more of a... a tribute. To me, your soon-to-be patron. Just make it good. When Maliolus wins the election, yeah? This place will change. You won't even want to leave. You'll see. I think it's gone on long enough, and Maliolus is going to put an end to it, once he's elected. We've already lined up the votes he needs to win. Just stay out of our way, and we won't have a problem. Maliolus, of course. If old man Sentius can't even protect his own daughter, how can we trust him to protect us? Yeah? What have you got for me? Just make it. Whatever. Just remember, I'll be watching. Isn't Thea the great is proof temple of a degenerate mind. Keeping an eye on things, Horatius? As always, priestess. Any news about Centilla, Navia, or Kabash? No sign of any of them. Give me a moment. Sorry I'm such a mess. I just lost a patient and a dear friend. Julia. She was a good woman. She was poisoned. She came in here frothing at the mouth. Normally I'd treat her with resin of sylphium, a rare plant which is perfect for this sort of thing. And I knew Dacius had some at his market stall, right around the corner. So I ran over there, 
But he just looks at me with this evil smile and says, That'll be a thousand denarii. There was no way I could afford that, and he knew it. Then that toad shrugs and says, Supply and demand. I guess you don't value your friend's life that highly. Anywhere else, I'd just pay a thug to steal it from his stall. But there's no way I can do that down here with the golden rule. So all I could do is come back here and just watch her die. I kept on apologizing. And now I'll never know who poisoned her or how they managed to do it without breaking the golden rule. Or why she cursed that snake's cruel black eyes with her dying breath. Well, unless you have the power to bring someone back from the dead, there's really just one thing you can do. Get me that Silphium resin. I'm going to have another patient in here soon. Could be in the next day or in the next hour. And I will not allow this to happen again. I don't care how you get it, but you have to make it happen. Because if I lose another patient this way, I swear to the gods below, not even the golden rule will stop me from marching up to that genetic comfortuto and scratching his eyes out. I'm Lucretia, and I'm going to be straight with you. I'm not a physician. This is Navia's clinic. I've just been filling in ever since she disappeared. I'm tired and out of my depth and miserable all the time. But I'd rather take this on myself than let one of you lot mess it up. My husband and I moved to Rome from Caesarea. He embraced the Roman way more than I would have liked and turned into an awful philanderer. I would have divorced him and demanded the return of my dowry, but I knew he would sooner have me killed than give me my right. So I waited for the right time to take what was mine and disappear. And then the fires came. As he prepared to evacuate our villa, I gathered our most precious belongings, coins and gemstones, and the moment his back was turned, I ran. I could barely see for the smoke, and the streets were full of people trampling each other. I ran for the river, like everyone else, and leapt in. The next thing I remember, I was waking up on a riverbank, not far from here. It's all right. Say what you will about this place. At least my fornicating husband will never find me. And while there's no shortage of snakes here, at least with the golden rule, they have to try to be discreet about it. Oh, this shrine was in use as a clinic long before any of us arrived here. Kind of strange to set up a clinic in the temple of the god of disease. But the god who inflicts a curse is also the only god who can undo it. So I suppose praying to Apollo for healing kind of makes sense. Well, she used to run the clinic. She was a midwife, not a physician. But she was the closest thing we had down here. And she was good, too. Until she suddenly lost all interest in us. One day she told me she'd made some profound discovery about the golden statues. This changes everything, she kept saying. But I had no idea what she was talking about. The last time I saw her, the last time any of us saw her, she was muttering to the statues like she could talk to them. And then she shut herself in the palace, barred the door from the inside, and nobody's seen her since. She's been gone so long now, we figure she's either dead or up to something so strange that she doesn't want anyone else to know about it. But I really wish I could reach her, because that's the only hope I have of solving a troubling problem, a real thorn in the poor situation. One of my patients is suffering from terrible rheumatism, his joints are inflamed, and he's in constant pain. I really shouldn't say. He wouldn't like it. And he's a little bit scary. He's become so irritable that the smallest things set him off. And I worry he'll end up losing his temper and lashing out. And you know what that means. I just know Navia would know how to treat him, assuming she's still alive. But nobody seems to know how to get into the palace. Really? That would be wonderful. Thank you. Let me know how you go.
Hey, Virgil, how much would you want to make me a bow? For the last time, Daisies, I'm not making you a bow. But why? You know why. But how am I going to defend myself against someone else with a weapon? There are no other weapons in the city. We all went along with the magistrate's weapons ban, so it wouldn't be an issue. That's why I've got to get in first before someone else beats me to it. Uh. Salve, stranger, and welcome to our idyllic little slice of the Empire. I'm Dacius. Terrible shame what happened to you, dear. But we just have to carry on, don't we? Certainly. All I ask is a reasonable price of a thousand denarii. That's hardly my concern. But if you get a job, work hard and save your coins, you should be able to afford it within, say, five years? Oh, it's perfectly legal. Simply a question of supply and demand, I'm afraid. Take it or leave it. Hear what? Uh, you sure you're feeling all right? If you're hearing things, perhaps you should pay a visit to Lucretia's clinic. We don't want another navier on our hands. Well, she claimed the statues were whispering to her. Nobody else could hear it. Then she shut herself in the palace and we never heard from her again. But I digress. Do you want this Sylphium or not? Very well. Perhaps I can interest you in something within your budget? You mean, how did I end up here? That is a lengthy tale. All right. Well, you see, I'm in the business of procuring rare and precious objects liberated from the enemies of Rome. Mostly sculptures, vases, the occasional slave, fetch a magnificent price in Roman high society. Had myself a nice little shop in Rome, just off the Forum. Lots of foot traffic and close to the docks. Good place to be when the fires broke out. See, about seven months ago, half of Rome caught on fire. Everyone who couldn't get to an outer gate was running for the river, open to escape by a barge. So I gathered my coins and some priceless vases into a cart and had my most loyal slave girl, pretty young thing named a camphor, push it for me. All the way down to the river, I'm elbowing for a stampede of people, turning back now and then to make sure she hasn't legged it with my valuables. But, to my surprise, we make it, and I see this barge loading up, and it's so full it's almost sinking. But the captain's happy to take my coin, so I start boarding, and then he puts his hand on my chest and he says, No. Too heavy. The cart or the girl. So I did what anyone would have done. Of course I chose the cart. I mean, I can always buy a new slave girl if I still have my money. So I put me hand on the cart, and I guess you realise what was happening because those pretty black eyes of hers go all wide. And in one swift motion, she topples the whole bloody thing into the Tiber. Naturally, I dived in after it, hoping to salvage my fortune. Only, I guess I must have hit my head or something, because everything went black. When I came to, I'd washed up on the riverbank, not far from here, with nothing in the world but a single silver coin. Thank you, friend. But it turns out it might have been a stroke of good fortune, because this place is a veritable treasure trove. Look around you, there must be more gold in here than in the treasury of Rome. If I can just figure out how to get it out of here. I'm afraid not. If you're desperate, I did hear that Aurelia down at the tavern claims to know of a way out, but I'm not sure I trust her. Some people here are a little shady for my liking. Oh yeah, gotta watch out. Old Dacius has got your back though. It's terrible for inflation is what it is. There's so much gold just lying around, it's practically worthless, at least down here. Of course, I have an idea for generating real wealth, but what I need is a bow. Just a simple composite bow. I've scoured this city from top to bottom with no luck. But if you happen to find one, bring it to me and we'll talk. Thank you, friend. Maliolus. I mean, Sentius couldn't even keep his daughter safe. What hope does he have of protecting us? <laughs> Not going to happen. Very well. Another time.
the many shall suffer for the sins of the one. friend. I'm Galerius. Mind telling me who you are and what you were doing in the Shrine of Proserpina? Uh, I don't think so. I've never seen you before in my life. Oh, I guess how much did I drink last night? Uh, sorry to have bothered you. Oh, and since you seem to be in a hurry, you should try out this device I made. Worked real hard on it. Just attach the pulley to the rope over the lake and hang onto the handles. If it works, it'll be faster than walking. And if it doesn't work, the worst thing that can happen is you'll take a swim in the lake. I haven't quite summoned the courage to test it myself. But don't worry, it's completely safe. Probably. All right, see you around. What are you doing in here? Can't you see this woman is dying? She's been poisoned. She needs the resin of a plant called Silphium, but that Kulas Kumbolates Decius won't give it to me. What? Quick, give it here. Yulia, Yulia, you need to swallow this. Here, let me help you. Hopefully, in a moment, she should be able to breathe normally. That was extraordinary. How did you know she needed this exact thing? And at this exact moment? Are you some kind of oracle? A what? I'm sorry, I must have misheard you. I think it's your accent, because it sounded like you said, time traveler. But whatever kind of traveler you are, that was like the gods hearing my prayers and intervening. You just saved a person's life, and you should be proud of yourself. She might even be able to thank you herself in a few moments. And maybe she can tell us who poisoned her, and who she meant when she was muttering about that snake's cruel black eyes. In the meantime, I'm happy to help you with whatever it is you need. Oh no, sorry, I don't mean to worry you, but no, that is definitely not normal. There was one other person who claimed she could hear the statues talking to her, but that was Nevia, and uh, she went a little mad. Well, she used to run the clinic. She was a midwife, not a physician, but she was the closest thing we had down here, and she was good too until she suddenly lost all interest in us. One day she told me she'd made some profound discovery about the golden statues. This changes everything, she kept saying, but I had no idea what she was talking about. The last time I saw her, the last time any of us saw her, she was muttering to the statues, like she could talk to them. And then she shut herself in the palace, barred the door from the inside, and nobody's seen her since. 
She's been gone so long now, we figure she's either dead or up to something so strange that she doesn't want anyone else to know about it. But I really wish I could reach her because that's the only hope I have of solving a troubling problem, a real thorn in the poor situation. One of my patients is suffering from terrible rheumatism. His joints are inflamed and he's in constant pain. He's become so irritable that the smallest things set him off and I worry he'll end up losing his temper and lashing out. And you know what that means. I just know Navia would know how to treat him, assuming she's still alive. But nobody seems to know how to get into the palace. Thanks, I suppose. Sure, what do you want to know? Do you really want to know? I mean, if somebody poisoned her, then surely they would have broken the golden rule, and so maybe it's best we don't discuss it. Gladly. That's a shame. Thanks again for saving Yulia's life. Apollo smiles upon you. Oh. It's you. Sorry, I'm still a bit out of it. Uh, but thanks for trying to help me, I suppose. Was there something you wanted? Lucretia says I'm supposed to rest. As much as I'm grateful that you tried to help me, it's just not safe for me to talk about it. Please, no more questions. The Golden Rule. <laughs> That's the least of my worries. The gods may be cruel, but Maliolus and Claudia are far crueler. Please, just leave me alone. I don't want to talk about it. Oh, persistent as Nemesis, aren't you? I can tell you, but it's a long saga. All right. I'd been here about a week. When it dawned on me, I'd be trapped here for the rest of my life. I could hardly breathe, and I knew I had to get out somehow. So when my new friend Aurelia offered me a secret way out, I would have done anything. And then I learned her asking price. A thousand denarii. She was supposed to be my friend. I told her it would take me years to save up that much. So she suggested I take out a loan from Maliolus. And I did. I had to sign an agreement, saying I'd work off the debt over 30 years. But I figured I'd be out of here so soon it wouldn't matter. I paid Aurelia. And she gave me her so-called way out. Do you want to know what it was? Hemlock. It's a deadly poison made from a plant. Drink this, she said, and you'll be out of here in no time. Of course, I demanded my money back, but she refused. She pointed to a sign on her tavern saying, let the buyer beware. Then she just looked at me with those cruel black eyes, and she... She laughed. She immediately told Maliolus I'd tried to escape without paying him back. Only, he didn't seem upset or surprised at all. In fact, he just thanked her. And that's when I realized the two of them had planned the whole thing from the beginning. That's what I said to the Magistrate. I went to Sentius and begged for help, but he said the law was clear. I'd signed over my labor for 30 years and there was nothing he could do. I thought about resisting too, but Maliola said if I didn't submit, I'd break the golden rule. And I couldn't be responsible for all those deaths, so he locked me in his villa. 
confiscated everything I owned as collateral and made me wear immodest, humiliating outfits while I worked day in, day out. His wife Claudia was just as bad. She sent me to work on an endless stream of futile, demeaning tasks. I'd be on my hands and knees, scrubbing the floor clean for hours, only for her to pour slop on it and hiss, You missed a spot. Those two took everything from me. <sighs> but they forgot to confiscate one thing. My hemlock. I just wanted it to be over. But it seems I messed that up too. Should have drunk all of it. I brought it on myself. I trusted one of the most callous human beings I've ever met and tried to swindle the other. I don't know how I could have been so stupid. When I've recovered, I expect their thug Domitius will come for me. He'll escort me back to their villa, and I'll be right back where I started. Only this time, I won't be able to lull myself to sleep at night with the thought of a permanent solution. Honestly, it would have been better if the poison had been allowed to run its course. I doubt it. It seems this is the fate the gods have chosen for me, for trying to escape. At least until someone breaks the golden rule. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad. A lot. But it doesn't matter. I... I made a suicide pact with Ulpius last night. He's in exactly the same position as I am. Maliolus and Aurelia set the same trap for him a month after they did it to me. He and I are in this together. He's probably already thrown himself from the bluff into Maliolus's villa by now. If so, I'd never be able to live with myself, knowing I broke my promise to him. I doubt you could make it up to the bluff in time. I don't know who you are, or why you seem so determined to help me, but... Thank you. All right, but please don't take too long. You mean my life story? Oh, well, I grew up as part of a big family in Rome. Me and three older sisters. Our father found good husbands for my sisters, but I wasn't uh, cut out for that kind of life. So he found me a job as a scribe for a prominent merchant. It was a good life for a while, until seven months ago when the fires came. My colleagues and I worked desperately to try to protect our warehouse. We must have had a hundred workers passing buckets of water, chanting prayers to Vulcan, but they fell on deaf ears. The fire was relentless and it claimed everything and everyone. Well almost everyone my employer told me to grab what valuables i could and flee for the tiber with the crowds i remember diving into the river and then the next thing i knew i was waking up on the riverbank not far from here thank you but to be honest Sometimes I think dying in that fire might have been a blessing, given what's happened since. If that's your idea of a joke, it's not funny. Go away.
May Apollo keep you safe. <sighs> Lens Rufius, let the watcher stay. Can't talk long, got to stay sharp, but uh, families from Seleucia and Tiflis, Babylon province. But I've been Roman a long time now. Even joined the legions, the sixth. One they call Ironclads. Same way as everyone else. Because we're all in grave danger. Is it not obvious? Mm. The magistrate made me toss it in the chasm. Stupid. Going to have to improvise now. If you were dealing with what I am, you wouldn't be either. Nobody is supposed to know about that. Did Lucretia tell you? Gah. Look, I haven't been at my best lately. All my joints ache constantly, and, and the pain, it has a way of messing with your head. I get stirred up by things that shouldn't bother me, and the statues and my doubts about my faith and I just I just want to scream you want to help me do what Lucretia hasn't been able to do and find me something make the pain go away until then get out of my face Greetings and salutations. Greetings, I'm Georgius. It gladdens me to see another foreigner in our midst. We must stick together, you and I. And I must say, my sartorial friend, your clothing is most extraordinary. Leather boots in place of sandals, trousers with precise stitching, and such a curious design. I have traveled distant trade routes from the markets of Damascus to the farms of India. And never have I seen anyone dressed quite like you. Tell me, I must know. From which exotic part of the world do you hail? Is this a riddle, or perhaps you mean to say you feel like you are ahead of your time? I feel the same way. Another reason for us to stick together. We will have much time here to get to know one another. But for now, do you require assistance? I know you do not require clothing, so information, perhaps? Not so loud! What are you playing at? Have you not been told about the last attempt? Oh, then I suppose this duty falls to me. Ah, it is a long story. Aha! You are witty! I like that! Of course, the first question any of us asks when we first arrive is... How do I escape? It is only natural after all. And scaling the chasm wall is out of the question, for it is simply too steep and too far. But as they say, if the wind fails, use the oars. And here the second option is to leave the way we came in, through the shaft above the bathhouse. See? The shaft is quite high. But if one gathered up enough wood, one could make a series of ladders and climb one's way out. They have. I am getting to that. There was an attempt made by resourceful fellows who lived here some years ago. They even decided to keep records of their escape attempt for posterity. Unfortunately, as soon as they began to carry the first ladder down the hallway, they heard a godlike voice sank the entire city. And that... Radically, is where their tail ends. So it seems that to merely attempt escape is to invite the wrath of whichever god oversees this place. And so I say, it is best to not even discuss it aloud. That, my friend, is quite the dilemma. But after some reflection, I'm leaning toward voting for Maleobius. I do not enjoy the thought of another visit from Domitius if I voted the wrong way. 
Nothing comes to my mind, my friend. Ah, yes. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. As a Greek, this is nothing new to me. It is how our gods operate. Have you not heard the tale of the god Hades? He was the first to learn this dreadful lesson when he abducted Persephone and imprisoned her in the underworld. When Demeter, the mother of Persephone, learned of this, she did not punish Hades, the guilty one. Instead, she changed the climate of earth so that it became hot and dry. Nothing grew. The grain turned to empty husks and the rivers dried up. Innocent people died by the tens of thousands until at last the other gods were forced to act lest they have no worshippers left. So yes, we know this rule. This has always been the case. The golden rule has merely brought it into focus. If we are to survive, I say we must each keep the simple wisdom of Thales of Miletus, first of the seven sages of Greece, who said, avoid doing what you would blame others for doing. It does, doesn't it? But it is not enough for us to do this alone. For even if 99% of us adopt this principle, that will never be enough. Sadly, no matter how well we protect ourselves, the life's work of many good people can be undone in the blink of an eye by a single selfish act. Ah, the voice of experience. I am sorry for your loss, my friend. But on a lighter note, I will say one thing for the golden rule. For all their grim and haunting poses, these golden statues do make magnificent models for my clothing, do they not? <laughs> I hope that our paths cross again soon, my friend. I'm your right. best behavior, I trust. I am. Citizen. Salve, friend. I'm Octavia. Welcome to life under the Golden Rule. It's a ghastly thing, is it not? How are you faring so far? Ah, another Stoic, perhaps. We all need something to help us through times like these. We've all been where you are now. I remember when I first arrived. I used to lay awake at night contemplating the big questions. Why am I here? Is there a way out? 
What is the golden rule, and who or what is responsible for it? I still don't have any of the answers, I'm afraid. I don't think anybody does. But I'm happy to share with you what I've learned. Here, in this place, the Magistrate has me earning my keep by cleaning and pruning the gardens. It's not quite how I expected my life to go. I used to live in a lovely villa on the banks of the Tiber. I was even betrothed to a handsome young man from a prominent family. But long hours of menial labor for the good of the community has its own charms too, I suppose. Oh, much the same way as many of the others. When the fires came to Rome, seven months ago, my family and I fled for the Tiber, hoping to escape on a barge. We were among the fortunate ones with enough coins for passage, but unfortunately, there were a lot of desperate people, and they boarded before we could depart. A scuffle broke out, and I was pushed overboard. The last thing I remember was the water, rising up to hit my cheekbone. I woke up by the river, near that shrine, and stumbled across this place. Oh, that's all right. I'm sure it's all part of God's plan for me. If you like. I'm afraid not. Although, I did once hear someone gossiping down at Aurelia's tavern about a possible way out. I don't put a lot of stock in such rumors, but if you're desperate, and wealthy, you could look into it, I suppose. If that doesn't work, then I suppose we're all stuck here until gods, uh, the gods, decide our fate. I hope it works out. Hmm. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. I think about those words a lot. I'd like to think that if we all love our neighbors as ourselves and do to them as we'd have them do to us, then we'll all be fine. But on the other hand, I was always taught the intent of man's heart is evil from his youth, and that all of us are born with a tendency towards sin. And that's where I get stuck. Is it true? Are we born with a tendency towards sin? You don't think that's a little naive? Hmm. I suppose you've never seen what I've seen. Innocent men and women, torn apart in arenas while thousands of Romans look on and cheer. If that's true, then sooner or later, things are going to end badly for all of us down here. Unless, of course, there's some kind of divine intervention. Hmm. I wish I shared your faith. Please, please keep that to yourself. I know you're not from around here, but... Oh, things are very difficult for us right now. There was a terrible fire in Rome last year, and our emperor decided to make us his scapegoats. There were... executions. It was horrible. Oh, thank you. You have no idea how much I appreciate that. All right, well, it was lovely to meet you. I look forward to getting to know you better over the coming months. And if you ever... I can't believe this is how it ends. Oh, no. No. No, 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 no. Wolfpius, what are you doing? Get back from there. If you lose your balance, you'll fall. That's the idea. What? Why? Why would you want that? Why do you think I'm stuck for the rest of my life working for a man who treats me like an animal? I know, I know things are hard for you right now. They're hard for all of us. We're all in this together, Ulpius. Please, please just think this through. If you do this, it could be the sin that seals all of our fates. Is that what you want? I'm sorry, but I just don't care anymore. Please, Ulpius, help him. If he goes through with it, it could be the end for us all. I don't know what to do. I've never had to deal with this sort of thing. Please, you need to talk to him. I don't know, but it's a crime for slaves to take their own lives. And a debt bondsman isn't far off. 
Thank you. And please, choose your words carefully. Let me guess. You're going to lecture me on how suicide is a crime against the Empire. I screwed up my life. That's what's wrong. I borrowed money and when I couldn't pay it back, I wound up in debt bondage. I'll be stuck slaving away for that Culus Cumulatis Maliolus for the rest of my life. I am out. Wherever you are, Centilla, my love. I'm sorry. Opius, no! I... I can't believe he went through with it. I... Oh, Lord. That poor lamb. That was not your fault. There's no way you could have given him what he wanted moments after you arrived. Well, I suppose it means suicide isn't a sin under the Golden Rule. So I guess that means whichever god is responsible for it, it isn't mine. I'll have to let everyone know what's happened. And I guess Maliolus will have to clean up the mess in his villa. It's of his own making, after all. And I'd best pray for poor Ulpius. And may Vesta watch over you. I met Quatia. To what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? Oh my. I take it people are quite direct where you're from. I suppose it's quite charming in its own way. Usually, however, you wouldn't simply march up to a Vestal priestess and without due formality or courtesy ask, What is your story? approach would be to arrange an introduction through a mutual acquaintance in high office, by which time you would already know how to address me. And then you would find a way to satisfy your curiosity rather more indirectly. But to be honest, I've often thought what an unnecessarily formal way to communicate that is. So, let's do it your way. You just keep being yourself and ask whatever you like. It'll be a refreshing change. You really don't know. You are from far away, aren't you? Well, 
I am one of the priestesses charged with keeping the sacred flame in Rome's shrine of Vesta burning. I take it you know who Vesta is? Simply, I tend to the temples, ensure their sanctity is preserved. Why? So that we continue to honor our gods, invite their blessings, and not bring their wrath down upon us, of course. It's vital that we keep them appeased and remain in their good graces. You know, I'm not entirely sure. But what about you? How did you end up here? Karen, you say? And nothing about that name seemed... odd to you. Older. I see. Hmm. I wonder if... No. I apologize. I don't mean to be cryptic. It's just that you've got me thinking. Have you spoken with any of the others about how they arrived here too? I really think you should. Go around and ask them what they remember and see if you notice any patterns. Good. Thank you. But please be careful. I just don't want to see what happened to Livia happen to you too. Then what is it? What else? Yes, I understand many of our friends were carried here by a river current. What else? That's true. I know I wasn't entirely sure how I wound up here. It's as I feared. I think I understand what poor Livia has been going through. You mentioned earlier you met a young woman in the forest named Karen, yes? I see. And was this Karen by any chance wearing a hood? Because I've seen her before. There's something I think you should see. I think you'd better follow me to the baths. Too closely. We can't have people thinking we're bathing together. arrived in the baths. Real nasty sort with his face. Help! You have to do something. A man arrived in the baths. Real nasty sort with his face all covered up. And he's got a weapon. You have to do something or he's going to break the golden rule. Thank you. He's still in there somewhere. I have to hide. Find me in this empty shrine when it's over. What? What? We don't have time for this. I have to go. Ugh. The shrine is collapsing. <laughs> Stop right there.
I am looking for Tiberius Quinctius Crispus, otherwise known as Quinctius. Do you know where he is? I'm not sure I believe that, so allow me to explain something to you. I am here with orders from Emperor Nero himself to find and execute the cultist Quinctius for terrible crimes against the Empire. So, if you tell me the truth, I will allow you to live. But if you lie to me or otherwise obstruct the Emperor's business in any way, I will put this arrow through your chest. Is that understood? Thank you. Now tell me, who are you people? And what is this place? A small community. Ha! I was told Quintius was a cultist, but I never thought he'd be foolish enough to lead me right to the heart of his mystery cult. Oh, don't play coy with me. I don't care if you're worshipping Bacchus, Magna Mater, or Christ. You lot are all the same to me. Always sneaking off to your secret sanctuaries, indoctrinating each other with your little mantras. The Emperor may have tolerated your activities up until now, but after what Quintius did, those days are numbered. You say that, but if you're not a cult, then why go to such great lengths to keep this place a secret? So you admit you're not allowed to leave. Threatening me is not going to help you, but in any case, that sounds an awful lot like a cult to me. And I saw the inscription saying, the many shall suffer for the sins of the one. I take it this is some kind of mantra you all believe? Ugh, a distinction without a difference. You've clearly been indoctrinated into this nonsense. Now tell me. Where did you lot get enough gold to make all these statues? You lot are practicing human sacrifice too. You people disgust me. Yes, yes, because I'm the real villain here. It's all clear to me now. The secret sanctuary, the indoctrination, the mantra, the human sacrifice. You're cultists. There's no doubt in my mind. What baffles me is how a person can believe in something with such zeal. They just can't see what they've become. However, you still have a chance to redeem yourself by telling me where Quintius is. Do not waste it. Gold? <laughs> I don't care about gold. You don't seem to understand the situation, so let me make it abundantly clear. The only thing I care about is carrying out my duty to execute the cultist Quintius. I have spent many exhausting months tracking this arsonist through cities and villages, roads and forests, bribing stubborn travelers and peasants for leads. At times, I was so bone tired I could have sworn I'd approached the brink of death, but still, Day and night, I pressed on for the glory of the Emperor. So, you see, I know he's here. Turning back is not an option. And right now, the only thing standing between me and my triumphant return to Rome is you. So, for the last time, are you going to tell me where he is? Or do I have to put an arrow in you and ask the next person I meet? Then you're of no use to me. Do you have any last words? And there's a simple explanation for that. I lied. But if you want to know the truth before you die, here it is. Once I'm done with you and Quintius, I intend to kill every last one of you 
wretched degenerates. And I can think of nothing I'd enjoy more. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. Oh! 